Google Ads similar segments is a way for advertisers to try to find new customers and expand reach. Think of it as like a lookalike audience on Facebook or LinkedIn. Google is going to take certain signals like potentially browsing history on the display network or even previous search history to try to match to users who have similar behaviors as those that were on your original data segment. Now, most of this video, we're going to talk about how these similar segments are built, but then we're also going to show you some recommendations on how to use similar segments and how to solve potential issues that you have when trying to use them. I'm just going to toss this out here right now. I am going to use similar audiences and similar segments interchangeably. It's been called similar audiences for so long that I'm just used to saying it. I just want you to make sure that I mean the same thing. So whether you call them audiences or segments, they really are audiences that we can target within Google ads. So to look at all the audience options that we have, you need to head up to your audience manager and you can find that under your tools and settings, head over to the shared library column and there you'll see audience manager. Under your main data segments column, which should be the view that you land on, here you will see all of your audience segments. Your similar audiences, which we see some not in use in our demo account, your similar audiences that you see within your account are automatically created. And they're automatically created from original data segments that have a large enough audience to build a similar segment. We'll explain a little bit more later. If you ever want to look at just which similar audiences are available within your account, you can head on over to the filter, open that up, and then choose type. There you can break it down by any of the audience types that you can create, but we do have an option for similar segment. I'm gonna choose that and click apply. So here we get the options when we filter for just the automatically created similar segments. And since this is our demo account, a lot of our root audiences aren't gonna have a large enough size to show anything because we're not running ads or really using this Google Ads account, but your account will most likely have a lot more options. But you can see we can run similar segments in search campaigns, in YouTube campaigns, display campaigns, and here this one says Gmail campaign, understand that Gmail is now part of discovery. So yes, you can use your similar audiences or segments in a discovery campaign too. If I remove this filter, scroll down a little bit, we do see some options for similar segments, but they're labeled under the YouTube users. Since I love YouTube, just a little side note, years ago, Google pulled the ability to target YouTube user audiences for the display network. That's why we see a zero over here. So there really isn't any way that's fully around that. But one thing that we can try to do as best as possible to mimic that experience is use one of your similar audiences from YouTube user activity, and those will still be able to target on display. Again, it's not as specific, but using similar audiences can try to help reach people with similar behaviors as people who are engaged with YouTube. So we do see that people who subscribe to your channel, share your videos, like your videos, can be a pretty good engaging user. So if you want to find more users like that, use the similar audiences and try to get in front of them with display. But we're not here to just talk about YouTube. So the main question probably is going to be, how are similar audiences created? And that's a good question. So to show you how to do that, I'm going to jump into some slides and we'll walk through the few different ways that Google collects this information to build these segments. Google Ads is going to look at fairly recent search activity for any of the users that were part of your original remarketing list. So in some way, it's a higher level of search history targeting. Once the search history information is collected, then Google's going to try to find new people that have similar behaviors as the people that were on our original remarketing list. So to do this, Google's going to look at a variety of different factors that make up the original remarketing list. It's going to look at the number of people on your original list. So larger lists can help give Google more signals. The more people that you have, we assume the more searches are collected that can help give better signals to build a similar segment. Google's also going to look at how recent these people joined your original remarketing list. So if you're creating a similar segment off of a customer list and you're not updating that customer match audience, it's actually not going to help your similar segments based upon that list. Other remarketing lists such as website visits, app activity, those are automatically going to refresh. And as new people keep visiting your website, new people keep visiting your app, that's going to help feed the similar audience signal because Google's going to use machine learning to keep those trends in mind. And then Google's also going to pay attention to how similar the search behavior is between all of these users that make up the similar segment. If there's a common theme within most of the users that have similar behavior, odds are that's a better match. So that's why I'm going to say it again, and I'm probably going to say it a bunch more times throughout the video. Having a stronger original remarketing list or root audience is going to be important to make sure that your similar audiences are a lot stronger. 
Now these are search audiences. If you have run RLSA campaigns before, adding an audience in the search, whether it's an observation audience or a targeting audience, you need to have at least 1,000 cookies for that audience to run in search. Now when you're building a similar audience from search, you need to make sure that the original search audience has at least 1,000 cookie users. Your similar segment is gonna have a lot more, but there's no way a search similar segment can be built if you don't have a large enough audience. If the audience isn't large enough, you may see in the search column that the list says incompatible. And we did have a few of those examples when I hopped into Audience Manager earlier. So the only thing you can do is just wait until you give Google more sources of information to build a better similar segment. And keeping in line with a lot of their personal advertising policies, any similar audiences will not use search activities based on race, religion, sexual orientation, health, and other potential sensitive topics. So depending on what industry you're in, you may not have the strongest similar segment based off a of search, or you may not have one that shows up at all. Now going away from search, how are the non-search similar segments built? And there are gonna be some key differences. One of the ways is that Google looks at display network browsing history from the past 30 days. Google's also gonna look at the content the user may be looking at to give some additional signals or characteristics of who that person is. Then Google will take the information from the previous browser history and try to find users who have similar interests and characteristics as the same people who were reviewing similar content as the one in our original segments. Now, when we're talking about display network, this also can include app activity. I have to call that out there because I know a lot of people are really against behavior of what they see on apps and I understand it. It's definitely a mixed bag. But if you do have an app to sell and you're trying to find more users interested in that app, Trying to find users who have similar app behaviors as the one like yours, maybe off of a customer list or something like that, other conversion remarketing lists, this might be a good way for you to test expanding your reach and trying to find new users. Anyone who's already visiting your website or app, they are automatically excluded from your similar segments. So if you are using a website-based retargeting audience in another ad group, you don't have to worry about those signals overlapping. Google's not gonna take anything from your actual retargeting list and move it into your similar audiences. And for the original data segment, your original root audience, this is the biggest difference from the search similar audience. So for any non-search similar segment, you need to have at least 100 visitors in the original data segment. And then while that segment's building, close to what I talked about in search, Google will look at things of how recently the users joined the list, but they'll also keep in mind of the types of websites that these visitors browse to make sure that, again, we do see some sort of pattern of similar behavior of how these users browse certain pieces of content on the display network. And I didn't include it on this slide, but I will bring it up. The same sensitive category rules apply to non-search similar segments. So if users are browsing certain apps or websites that fall within the sensitive categories, again, talking about race, religion, health, those sort of things, that is not gonna be included for this particular similar segment. Next, I wanna talk about some recommendations for similar segments. I'm not gonna use the term best practices because it will be different depending on what type of activity you typically see within your account. See, I told you I'd bring it up again. I should have it in bold and in a different color because this is the most important point I can bring up. Start off with your best retargeting list. Remember the goal of similar segments or audiences is to try to find more users like your original list. So most likely you wanna find more users who are already current customers, or already have performed some sort of action on your website. I'm thinking about thank you pages, form fills, downloading certain things on your website, purchasing something off of your app or website, you get it. I've never started off a similar audience segment test with just a page visit similar audience. This is already a pretty high level approach to try to build more awareness and grow reach. So I wanna give Google as many signals as possible to do as best as I can to try to make my new similar segment as relevant as possible. So hopefully these users come back and do perform some sort of action. And here's where I like to test automated bidding. There's already a lot of moving parts on how these similar audiences are generated. And if you are using a lot of the website and app-based activity audiences, they're automatically gonna be updated. So I would wanna have my bidding kind of reflect those automatic changes. And one thing that I typically do is separate out my similar segments from any of my other audience or data segments that I'm using. Just to clarify, you can add similar audiences to existing campaigns just to see how they perform. 
but the intent is totally different. Someone who has already visited your website, let's say in one main data segment, is totally different than someone who has similar behaviors of a person who's visited your website. Doesn't mean that they're actually interested within your product. So because of that difference in intent, we typically will separate this out. Leave our similar segments within their own campaigns, give them a different budget where we will have more control over our bids and our campaign settings. So now let's say you've launched your campaign. Possibly, you may have some setbacks. I'm gonna talk about a few of the most common issues that may come up from similar segments and what the possible solution could be. Let's just say you uploaded a brand new customer match audience or you created a new retargeting audience based upon website visits. If you wanna use that list to test out a similar segment, it might not show up right away. They typically take a couple days to build and that is assuming you have a large enough root audience. So if you do plan on running any similar segment, make sure you get your original data segment uploaded in Google Ads or created within Google Ads as soon as possible. Here's another similar point. Any original data segment with less than 500 users is very unlikely to have a similar segment built. I believe I said it earlier in the video, so this is just stressing this point again. Try to make sure your root audiences are as large as possible. It's a point of, yes, we wanna make sure a similar audience can even be built, but the more users within your original data segment, it's gonna give Google more signals to hopefully build a better, more accurate similar segment. If your campaign is running and you really not see the performance you want out of similar segments, look at your ad creative. Are you being too specific? Are you asking for the deepest conversion action that a user can take to users who may not even know who your brand is? Remember, in most cases, your original root retargeting audiences are gonna be excluded from your similar audiences. The goal here is to find new users. So if you're being too aggressive, you might be turning people off. Similar segments work best to introduce your brand to a new audience. Tell them what you're about. Come up with an introductory offer and showcase that within your ad creative that makes it more appealing. And then are you measuring the wrong metric for success? Yes, we want conversions, but what conversions are you adding to these campaigns? Within the campaign setup, Google really is stressing more of campaign level conversions and starting to prioritize the value of certain conversions. If we are going higher level, just introducing someone to your brand, maybe looking at the deepest level conversion action isn't the best way to go. What higher level actions can users take? For example, instead of encouraging someone to buy something right away or sit on a sales call right away, maybe you're trying to optimize your automated bidding to go for higher level actions like a newsletter sign up, a PDF download, some of those earlier signals. It's something that you're going to have to look within your account and see what makes sense. Depending on what products you have, what offers you're promoting, and how long your sale or buyer cycle is. And before we wrap it up, I do want to show you one thing that is always important to keep in mind. As the emphasis on privacy keeps growing within all the ad channels, it's going to affect how similar segments are built. What you see right here is the Google Ad Settings. It says it right at the top. The address is adsettings.google.com and any user could go here and turn off ad personalization. You can see we can also uncheck the box so Google doesn't use our activity to have better personalized ads. If a user turns off this ad personalization, they will not be considered within any of your similar segments. And if more and more people become aware of this, they start turning off ad personalization, it will make your similar segments less effective. So while we still use similar segments to test them out, to try to go reach for a few of our clients, we have to keep a strong eye on the performance and our users taking the action that we want them to take. I don't see a big massive wave coming yet, but we all know where it's going with advertising and user privacy. So if you feel you've plateaued in any certain area of your business and you're looking to get in front of new customers, in addition to how we can use lookalikes and all the paid social channels, consider testing out a similar segment. And if you have any other questions about similar segments and maybe how we have used them in a few of our clients, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.